about this house. From now on, Kristen and her family will be living here. So could you possibly move somewhere else? I was taken aback by the sudden statement, unable to comprehend what was happening, and all I could do was listen in bewilderment to my mother-in-law's words. Are you listening? And here, take this. What is this? My husband handed me a folded piece of paper. The moment I unfolded the paper, it was clear it was a divorce application. I could not grasp the intentions of my mother-in-law or my husband at all. You'll understand once you open it. It's the divorce paper, my husband said, laughing and observing my reaction. This house was acquired with the savings I had accumulated. It would have been impossible to purchase it with my husband's part-time job income. Despite fulfilling the wish of my mother-in-law and husband to convert it into a duplex, this was the predicament I found myself in. Why must I be put in such a difficult situation? Okay, okay, I get it. So it's fine if I just leave, right? When I said this, the two of them were overjoyed. Now finally we can get rid of the noisy one and have some peace. I never thought she would leave so easily. Their end will undoubtedly be miserable. I wanted them to see. I will make sure they regret this. Just three years ago, I was working at the same trading company as my husband, Steve, and we got married afterward. I quit my job after getting married, but there was a special reason for that. While working, I was also drawing illustrations as a hobby and sharing them on social media. At one point, my illustrations suddenly became popular on social media, leading to frequent orders, and now my monthly income can reach up to $10,000. I finally started earning more. Really? That's wonderful. I hope you can continue to earn a stable income from this. That's how Steve supported my illustration work at home, and our married life was going smoothly. After five years of marriage when we started thinking about buying a house, my husband lost his job because of staff reductions at his workplace due to economic downturns. I've worked so hard for the company and to be treated like this, I'm sorry. I couldn't find the words to encourage my husband, who apologized with tears, I could only support him silently until he regained his composure. A month later, my husband started a part-time job at a nearby store at night, but his income significantly decreased to about $700 a month. I felt the need to work even harder. After that, I managed to work more and significantly increased our savings. With that, we could finally consider buying our own home. Another year passed, and after discussing with my husband, I made up my mind about purchasing a home. Hey, isn't it time to buy a house? But my income is low. Don't worry. I'm here and we have some savings, so it's all good. With my strong suggestion, my hesitant husband made a request. It might be strange to ask this, but could we make the house a duplex so my mom can live with us? My dad has passed away, and above all, our family home is quite old. My mom also mentioned she would prefer a duplex if we were building a new house. My father-in-law passed away from a heart attack when my husband was young. I had received support from my mother-in-law, and I understood how much my husband cared for her. Okay, it's decided. We'll respect your mother's wishes and your request and make our home a duplex. So we went to the housemaker with my mother-in-law and signed the contract for our ideal home. In terms of the interior, we greatly considered the opinions of my husband and mother-in-law. I would have preferred to customize it more to my liking, but I was happy as long as they were pleased. However, I never dreamed I would be betrayed in such an unexpected way. About ten months after the house contract, our home was finally completed. We also set up an office workspace, and its comfort has greatly contributed to my creative activities. Wendy, thank you so much for building such a beautiful home. You're welcome. I'm always grateful for your support. My mother-in-law really loves the house and never stops expressing her gratitude to me. Seeing her so happy made me truly joyful. Life in the new house started smoothly, but after three months, I noticed a change in my mother-in-law's behavior towards me. Hey, could you tidy up my room a bit? I'm a bit busy with work right now. 
Busy or not, you're always holed up in your room, aren't you? Steve mentioned that you're not working hard enough. Not working hard enough? What has my husband seen to say such a thing? This house was built with my earnings. I wanted to argue with my mother-in-law, but since it was unclear whether Steve actually said that, I ended up silently complying with her request and started cleaning the room. While I was cleaning, my mother-in-law relaxed and did nothing. After about an hour of cleaning and getting things in order, I spoke to my mother-in-law. So you're finally done. I'll be asking you to do this regularly from now on, you know. Ah, uh, yes. I was so astounded that I was at a loss for words. Why do I have to do things like I'm her servant? While my mother-in-law's words were infuriating, my anger towards my husband also grew. I decided to confront him about this at dinner. By the way, I heard from your mother that you've been complaining about my work ethic. Well, just a bit. When I see my sister working hard at the factory, I feel like there's a lack of fairness compared to you staying at home. Steve has an older sister named Kristen, who is two years older than him. She has a three-year-old child and gets along well with her husband and even keeps in touch with me occasionally. Still, I was shocked to hear that Steve actually felt that way. I thought he was on my side, but hearing this truth left me stunned. After that, my mother-in-law's treatment of me became even stricter. It started with just cleaning, but gradually escalated to demands, like give me a massage and make me some coffee, treating me like a servant. Steve still showed no intention of looking for a full-time job. Hey, aren't you going to look for a full-time job soon? Stop nagging. You're earning well enough, so that should be sufficient. With a husband who wouldn't listen and a mother-in-law who treated me like a laborer, I was on the verge of breaking down. Kristen, I can't take it anymore. Help me. Are you okay? After three months of enduring this, I sought help from Kristen, who immediately intervened and apparently spoke sternly to Steve and my mother-in-law. Thanks to Kristen, the harassment stopped temporarily for about two weeks. Then, one evening after dinner, while I was washing the dishes, Steve said he wanted to talk. What do you want to talk about? Just wait. I'll call Mom, so sit here. Wondering what I was about to hear, I waited anxiously on the living room sofa for my mother-in-law and husband. Sorry to keep you waiting. Steve said you had something to talk about. As I said that, my mother-in-law and husband exchanged glances and smirked. Taking her time, my mother-in-law started speaking. About this house, from now on, Kristen and her family will be living here. So could you possibly move somewhere else? What? I was taken aback by the sudden statement, unable to comprehend what was happening, and all I could do was listen in bewilderment to my mother-in-law's words. Are you listening? And here, take this. What is this? My husband handed me a folded piece of paper. The moment I unfolded the paper, it was clear it was a divorce application. I could not grasp the intentions of my mother-in-law or my husband at all. You'll understand once you open it. It's the divorce papers, my husband said, laughing and observing my reaction. This house was acquired with the savings I had accumulated. It would have been impossible to purchase it with my husband's part-time job income. Despite fulfilling the wish of my mother-in-law and husband to convert it into a duplex, this is the predicament I find myself in. Why must I be put in such a difficult situation? What's been going on with both of you for the past few months? I appreciate that you provided this house for us, but your income surpasses that of Steve, putting him in a difficult position. We don't need someone who can't respect her husband in this house. That's why we've decided that Kristen will live here instead. That's right. I'm honestly jealous that you were doing well by yourself. I didn't quit my job on my own, and yet I've been pressured to keep looking for work. I'm fed up. So that's the reason. Their harsh treatment towards me was based on such a background. I'm just astonished by their childish reasoning. This house was purchased with my earnings. I really wanted to say you two should be the ones to leave, but I no longer had the energy to respond. 
Okay, okay, I get it. So it's fine if I just leave, right? Yeah, that's right. Now finally we can get rid of the noisy one and have some peace. When I declared I would leave, they could hardly hide their joy. Well, if that's what they want, I'll respond in kind. Just watch. I'll make sure they regret this. From that moment, I vowed to get back at them. The next day, I packed the bare minimum and left the house. My mother-in-law and Steve were there to see me off, but there was not a trace of sadness. Make sure you submit the divorce papers. Thinking that I won't have to see you any more brightens my mood. We'll take good care of this house, so don't worry. They were spouting whatever they pleased. Don't worry, I won't let you have your way from now on. After leaving the house, I immediately contacted Kristen. Hello, Kristen. Oh, what's up? I told her about being asked to leave the house by my mother-in-law and Steve and that Kristen was supposedly going to live in the house after me. What? What's happening? Can we meet somewhere to talk? This information was completely new to Kristen. To discuss the details, I headed to a nearby cafe, she suggested. About five minutes after I arrived at the cafe, Kristen also arrived. Sorry for the sudden request. No, it's fine. I have nowhere else to go now anyway, I said with a hint of self-mockery. Kristen's expression sharpened. About that matter, I haven't heard anything from Mom or Steve. In fact, I didn't know about it. My husband and I are actually planning to build a house elsewhere. Did you really not know about this? I really had no idea. I was surprised by this as well. This meant that Steve and my mother-in-law lied about Kristen moving in to kick me out of the house, knowing that I realized I don't need to cling to that house anymore. I'm relieved to hear that. Actually, I was considering selling the house even if you were really going to live there. I've made up my mind now. I don't want those two to be happy at all. Indeed, they went too far. What you want to do is up to you, Wendy. I can't overlook what happened this time. I felt relieved after talking to Kristen. I'm so glad I could talk to you, Kristen. Thank you. After leaving the cafe, I went straight to the city hall to submit the divorce papers. Then I visited a real estate agent to discuss selling the house and land, handing over the property register. Those two must be living peacefully, unaware of anything. Every time I think of them, anger wells up inside me. The real estate agent mentioned that the property is well located and relatively new, so a buyer should be found quickly. Please contact me once it's sold. I'll be at my parents' home for a while. I left everything to the real estate agent and returned to my parents' house. An hour later, I arrived home and my parents welcomed me back, though surprised by my sudden return. Two weeks later, I received a call that a potential buyer was interested in the house. They wanted to see the house immediately and planned to visit the next weekend. Would it be okay if I joined the visit? As a former resident, I can provide detailed guidance about the house. The real estate agency contacted the potential buyers who were pleased and requested my presence. Now your happy times won't last long. Just imagining their shocked faces makes me smile. The day of the visit arrived. As the real estate agent opened the front door, my ex-husband Steve appeared. What the hell? Who are you? I'll call the police. Startled by Steve's loud voice, the real estate agent hesitated, but I spoke up from behind. Don't worry about him. He has no right to say such things. Ah, uh, Wendy, what's going on? Ignoring Steve's reaction, I led the potential buyers and the agent inside the house. Here is the living room. As I continued the tour, Steve raised his voice again, trying to interfere. Wait a minute. What's going on? I'm asking you. My mother-in-law also showed up, adding to the commotion. Ah, uh, what a hassle. What is the meaning of this? I'll call the police. The police? Go ahead, call them. Anyway, this house is no longer yours. I'm truly sorry to the visitors. I need to talk with these two, so please wait outside. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Leaving those words, I took Steve and my mother-in-law outside to explain the situation. 
Steve was red-faced with anger. What's this visit about? Why are you showing our house to others? I can't believe it. How dare you come here unannounced? They seemed not to grasp the full situation. Time to make things clear. Your house? Ridiculous. I bought this house. Only my name is on the registry, and I've confirmed with your sister Kristen that the story about her family moving in was a complete lie. But things changed suddenly. Such things happen. Do you really think that excuse will work? I've directly confirmed with Kristen, and she knew nothing about what you two were discussing. Confronted with the truth, they were left speechless, biting their lips. Furthermore, let me explain who the visitors today are. I put this house on the market. Therefore, neither I nor you own it now. The real estate agency does. Today, people interested in buying this house came to visit. Do you understand now? So arbitrarily, what are we supposed to do now? That has nothing to do with me. If you don't leave now, you might be reported for trespassing. As I stated this, calmly, Steve and my former mother-in-law began to apologize, their faces on the verge of tears. Don't be so cold. Don't abandon us. You know about my income. I can't make a living like this. Forget about the divorce. Let's start over. That's what we should do. In response to their desperate proposal, I couldn't contain my anger and ended up slapping Steve on the cheek with all my might. Stop with your childish excuses. Who was it that suggested the divorce? It was you, wasn't it? Your income is low because you've never seriously looked for a job. And mother, you've coddled your son and tried to drive me out of the house. But now you want to take advantage of me. Let me be clear. I have no intention of taking care of you or forgiving you. Now either pack your bags and leave or I'll call the police. Make your choice. With all my anger, I confronted them with the truth. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Fearful, they quickly returned inside. Within twenty minutes, they had their belongings and left the house, hurrying away. What a troublesome pair they were, thinking they could act selfishly and rely on me for a comfortable life. It was a huge miscalculation. They'll have to get by on their own from now on. I apologize for the disturbance. The issue has been resolved. You don't have to worry about those two showing up here again. After seeing them off, I apologized to the potential buyers and the real estate agent and resumed the house tour. Two weeks later, I received the news that the sale of the house was finalized. I could finally move on from the bitter memories associated with that place. Taking a deep breath, I regained my composure. Then I received a call from Kristen. Hello, it's been a while. How have you been? It's been quite some time. Actually, I managed to sell the house. That's great news. After a pleasant chat with Kristen, I found myself wondering about Steve and his mother. By the way, how are those two doing now? Well, from what I've heard, they're living together in a rundown, low-value apartment. Steve is still working part-time at the store and is struggling to find a full-time job due to his age, making it hard to secure stable employment. As a result, they're having a tough time financially, and Mom has started working part-time at a supermarket to help make ends meet. Looking back, Wendy deciding to divorce might have been the best choice for you. Receiving this detailed update from Kristen, I felt reassured that my decision was the right one. If I had continued living with them, the mental and financial burdens I would have faced would have been much greater than now. Maybe you're right. I'd like to keep in touch with you, Kristen, if that's okay. Really? I'm delighted. Please keep in touch. Let's go out for lunch with my child sometime. With that, the call ended. In the end, that decision was the most rational choice for my future, reaffirming my belief that living independently and doing what I love suits me best. For now, I'm fine without marriage or romance. I've never been in a place like this before. It's like a dream come true to live in a place like this. Carrie's light voice spread to every corner of the house. Sam, my brother, took to that voice and said, kind of teasingly, Emma, are you still here? Can you leave a little bit early? 
Sam chuckled, and Carrie leaned into Sam's arms sweetly. She smiled a little nastily at me and lightly poked Sam's forehead with her finger. Oh my God, don't say that. Emma is single. You have to be a little more careful. When I looked at them after they came to my parents' house, I felt that they were really only thinking about themselves. What were they thinking, these two? My parents would only give me a little warning. That might not be a good idea. However, they never seemed to think about me. Sam and Carrie are happily whispering to each other as I make a move to pack my bags. They don't seem to care at all about the condition of this house or my feelings about it. It might be too late for regrets. My name is Emma. I am a 24-year-old single woman, and my days were always bustling with my slightly troublesome younger brother, Sam, and his wife, Carrie. Sam has been a bit of a prankster since childhood. He used to annoy his friends a lot. He even chased insects in vain. His mischievousness was well known. He and I were a bit on different wavelengths, and I never made an effort to understand his personality. Carrie, who married Sam, also seems somewhat flippant. If she had been mature and sensible, she would not have been so blatantly surprised by me when we first met. Carrie is 24 years old like me and seems to be living happily with Sam now. She sometimes pokes a little fun at me, and I think she has become a little arrogant since she got married. Our parents have always spoiled Sam. Sam was sociable, had many friends, and was well received by his school teachers. I wasn't good at sports, but I was at the top of my class when it came to academics. Despite this, I never received much recognition from my parents or Sam. Even now, their attitude feels much the same. Sam's school years were marked by problematic behaviors. I think part of the reason for this can be attributed to our parents for not guiding him properly. In fact, Sam had touched or broken other people's belongings, leading to several apologies and compensation discussions with our parents. But out of compassion for Sam, our parents let his mistakes slide and didn't apologize to the affected parties. This led to escalating problems, and they even faced hefty bills a few times. Each time, our parents chose to pay in installments, and it seemed they were still repaying the debts over a long period. Such was Sam, but he was allowed to go to college. However, his job after graduation didn't work out, and he ended up working part-time. He has been dependent on our parents for money to go out and play. Our parents have also been very rough with money, and it seems that they have had to put up with a lot in order to give Sam an allowance. Then one day a surprise came to me. Sam's girlfriend Carrie was going to live with Sam in our parents' house. Carrie said she wanted to support my parents in their old age, but honestly, I'm a little skeptical. Based on past experiences, I don't think she was being 100% sincere in saying that. In fact, she might be assuming that living with our parents would be easier financially. Sam does not have a full-time job, so maybe she thinks she wouldn't have to worry about rent and might even get an allowance once in a while. Besides, it sounded like our parents were thinking of their future grandchildren and were on board with Carrie's proposal. That would have made them happy, but their attitude toward me was a little different. My mother in particular told me to get out of the house, and my father started to avoid me. Even Sam and Carrie were a little distant from me. I was really sad to see their attitudes. I had been supporting my family's finances all these years, but when I looked at them, it was as if they had forgotten about my efforts. My heart ached to see their indifferent faces. It made me want to argue with them a little, but I kept those feelings in my chest, calmly and slowly starting to pack up my belongings in my room. If I were to say I'm leaving home, there might be a lot of opposition, but as long as everyone told me to leave the house, I would respect their wishes. My younger brother and his wife were behaving like children, coming to the family home, and our parents indulged them. I had been putting money aside for a long time to repay the amount I spent on my family. My parents did not pay my college tuition due to financial reasons and out of spite. However, with some ingenuity and saving, I was able to pay back my college tuition in a little over two years after I got a job. 
I worked a small part-time job after work and put the money I earned from that into the family budget. That effort finally ended with the last payment. However, my parents seemed to think that I would keep sending them money for years to come, and they used it comfortably. I asked them gently, Are you sure about this? Then my mother raised her voice and said, Are you making fun of us? I became a little sad and decided to leave home. With one last look at Carrie, Sam, and my parents' faces, I began to move on to a new life. A month passed, and I started living in a new place with my longtime boyfriend, James. He is always kind and cares about me more than his family. With him, my new life would be wonderful. One day, I received a call from an unknown number. I had blocked calls from my family, but for some reason, I was curious and answered the phone. Then I heard my mother's voice. Why aren't you sending money to the family? That was the content of the call. I was a little surprised that my relationship with them had not yet been severed, but I couldn't help but be curious and ended up knowing more about their lives. Since Emma is working so hard to support us with $3,000, maybe James and Carrie can come up with $4,000. Our parents seemed a little hopeful. They probably believe that my brother and sister-in-law's promise of future support would help make things easier. But when Sam heard these expectations, he immediately shook his head and said, I can't do it. My father, who had expected a total of $7,000 each month with $3,000 from me and $4,000 from the younger couple, was left in shock by Sam's response. My father in particular seemed to be thinking of retiring soon from the stress of his job, and he was probably counting on this income. Sam, on the other hand, was optimistic that living together would increase his allowance. In fact, he was quite surprised when he found out that he still had some outstanding alimony from his past. I had never considered sending $7,000 to my parents each month, so Sam called me to discuss the matter. James, who was helping me, looked concerned next to me and suggested we talk about it, but I knew I had to do this, so I took a deep breath, regained my composure, and continued. I know it's a lot of work to pay for the family loans, but I hope you and your family can get through it together. At these words, the atmosphere of the place suddenly changed. In fact, I had paid for all of our family's finances, but my parents seemed to have completely forgotten that fact. Ha, huh, you're paying your mortgage, right? Do you have a good grasp of your own home situation? If I'd known this, I wouldn't have gotten married. Carrie couldn't help but let her true feelings slip. Then all hell broke loose in the house. There were loud cross doses of fighting. In the midst of all this, I reported one last little surprise and hung up the phone. Oh, by the way, I'm getting married to James. From now on, I want to enjoy my new life, so please don't contact me anymore. I don't know what happened to my parents or Sam after that, but James and I are enjoying our new life together. I am planning to have a small wedding next year and intend to invite only those who really care about us. From now on, I will no longer be involved with them. I am free to stretch my wings and start a new chapter.